Hello, this is Jerem Blaine, Oxygen Not Included, and in this episode, I'm building a research reactor and all things that uh, go around it to keep it cool, to get the red bolts from it and send those red bolts to the correct location. Also, in this episode, I'm trying a new way of uh, recording by avoiding fast forward. Hopefully, that will lead to better looking videos. So, at this point, I mentioned last episode that I don't want to converge two uh, oxygen lines into one. It's not exactly true. Towards the end of the line, it's okay to do this. You just don't want to do this upstream closer to your oxygen generation system. But once you get further out in your base, then you can use two uh, gas bridges like this to converge them to one line. That works out quite well. So I have an alert here that I'm out of water in the desolins. So I'm going to have to aim to solve this. So, uh, by the way, I, as I had mentioned earlier, I'm not using the fast forwarding option so much. So I'm hoping this looks a little bit better at the end of this video. If it does or doesn't, please let me know. If it uh, does, I'll uh, continue on with this new style. And if it doesn't, I'll endeavor in the next video to, uh, po to see what else I can do to potentially remedy any uh, jitterness. In that so hopefully that that's is going to work so what i'm doing here tiny bit of a water cache uh, that i'm relying on for oxygen as well as the oil well so that is not great but ultimately i wanted to get ox or water from the home world to be supplied here through an interplanetary launcher that's going to be in the home world but i need rad bolts in the home world that's why i'm building this uh, research reactor okay so that uh, that tube should be fine with that small bit of cache of water as long as I get this thing construct everything inside here by the way including these liquid vents have to be made out of steel another alert here uh, this uh, this tube here is running out of oxygen let's uh, get them land luckily they're not far from the uh, home world so they can land very quickly and get off that rocket and get access to the, some oxygen uh, that is due to the fact that they have run out of algae which I don't know if I've got a lot of algae to replace it with, but it's possible they've got enough data banks that they don't need to uh, go back up for any time soon. And I can also store a tiny bit of oxygen inside the pipes inside the rocket, so if I need to go up a little bit to get a few more, but I don't think I'll need to worry about data banks anytime soon. So power system here. I have actually a shutoff that is connecting power to only the Red Bolt generators. I have a radiation sensor, and that's saying only give power to the Red Bolt generators if you actually sense a significant amount of radiation. There's no point in running them otherwise. This system here is not going to be running 100% of the time. So I'm going to have a bigger uh, research reactor uh, constructed. I'm going to call that one, the future one, a nuclear power plant. But this one's just a mini research reactor facility. It, uh, it's going to have to shut off every now and then when things get too hot going to create a, just creating a system on top of this to keep the top of the steam turbines cool because they need to stay well below 100 degrees to keep operating but that's going to recycle the water so that i can use the water for cooling the research reactor can also use the water for uh for uh, well going to the input of it as well so it can go in a cycle instead of continually applying new water to it so this is the enriched uranium line this is going to be important how i control this i do not want to just fire all the enriched uranium in there because what will happen is the research reactor uh, you'll never be able to turn it off once you put load it up with material it will have to burn itself out so if i can control the amount of enriched uranium to be a very small amount over time any given time that the research reactor is too hot, I can say, hey, shut that off, stop supplying that with uh, enriched uranium and allow it to uh, cool down before you add any more. So that is, that is uh, the logic I'm going to aim to put in there. All right, at this point, I'm going to start the process filling these liquid reservoirs. One of the things you absolutely do not want to have to uh, happen when you have a research reactor is run out of water. That's why I've got several liquid reservoirs of water going in there. And I will not start to uh, let it operate until they're all full. 
because if you don't, you start the process, you don't have water going into it, you can get a meltdown. And that, uh, that causes damage everywhere, is excess amount of radiation we don't need. So I'm aiming to do that. Also got a cooling line on the right. And that is where actually the water line going down and the two left is the cooling line. This is going to be uh, brine. Actually, I was going to think I was going to create an aqua tuner inside that uh, chamber, but I don't think it's actually necessary. I'm just going to use the brine line here. This is what is cooling the farming system, the sleet wheat. But that's good enough for cooling the top of the uh, steam turbines. The idea is I'm going to have the temperature sen sensor in the that, which is actually the same one that I have on top of the the um, aqua tuner. And that's going to say, okay, is it a certain temperature? Let's say 50 degrees. If it's 50 degrees, throw some cooled uh, brine through it. So they're going to say if the temperature is above 50 degrees, uh, I'll have the water go through it. Otherwise, the water or the brine can skip it. On the desolence here. Things are, are not looking good water-wise. I'm not recycling my water in my in this washroom, which I had planned to do. I stopped uh, doing that because I was saving the polluted water to go out of this system for the use of the cooling line. You notice that I've got a lot of polluted water. That's all the polluted water that came from the dupes. So that's not from a geyser or something like that. That's actually right out of the washroom, showers and Toilets and everything anyway doesn't uh, doesn't matter. But I've been saving a little bit of polluted water here. So if I just build a sieve and feed that into it, I can push the water down, and I will uh, put that in an infant or in, in a in a system that will essentially be able to maintain the water with uh, going forward in the washroom without ever have to adding more water by the just by the fact that it cleans itself. This keeps going off, and it's annoying me. It's uh, it's because water goes in, water goes off, and every time it goes off for just a moment, it stops the game. So that's why I talk, took the pause and zoom off. Now, all right, actually, now that it's full, I think I might be able to uh, get away with uh, re adding that alert. So I'll tell it to zoom to this location, pause if that ever happens again. All right, so this rocket has arrived, and I'm starting to direct oil to uh, go back to the uh, home world there for processing that's going to be turned ultimately to petroleum then plastic and then i'll be able to reload this rocket with water send it back and i'm also uh, going to get oil from the interplanetary launcher as well just having to look at the temperature of my home world here it's quite cold i normally don't have this problem it's usually the reverse it's because i've got two water geysers or one uh, shouldn't say water but polluted water and brine geysers that are producing a lot of cold liquid which is not a bad thing um so i might actually have to build a system not necessarily to heat it up but to oh okay this guy's stressed yeah let's send him to uh, remove his skills he had the minitronics engineering skill and uh, i should have gotten rid of that a while ago he only needed to build it a little bit of things but uh, yeah, so that, uh, that's gonna provide oil for, for my home world. And then I'm going to uh, send it back with water, but I'm gonna aim to build an interplanetary launcher with the red bolts that I'm generating here. But the first thing I wanna do in just building some red bolt reflectors is have this uh, directed towards a new room. And this is gonna be the, um, advanced uh, material or the material research station the new location of that okay so for the dupe over here that doesn't have a running washroom i should at least give them a no host for the time being once this uh is all set i'm gonna make sure that the red bolts go into the direct uh, or the correct direction so they're gonna go towards this new room here I have yet to build the actual material research uh, station, but I'll do that in a moment. Just going to make sure that the this room is fully segregated from the outside of the base and there's no leaks out into space. And then I'll put that in there and point the red bolts towards it. This rocket over here, let's uh, turn this system off. So this is let that that is what has let the oil out. The oil is now empty. I can now direct water to go into it, and when that's full, I will send it back to the Desolens 
still get their desperate, desperate supply of water because it's going to take a little bit longer for the, the uh, interplanetary launcher to be completed. Speaking, or not speaking of that, but uh, just putting the water here. So this is the bron cool brine line and the logic to say if it needs to be cooled over there, 50 degrees or so, go on. And water sieve over here, that's converting polluted water to regular water. Speaking of the interplanetary launcher, choosing to uh, build a location for that. I'm going to put that here, and this is going to transport water to the Desolins. Because the Desolins, well, I was going to say it doesn't have a water source. That's not entirely true. It has a steam turbine. I could get uh, drive water for that. I do have a cooling system, and I've done it before. But I've got tons and tons of water here, and working with the uh, hot water or the steam um, geysers is a lot messier but I may endeavor to do that in the f much farther future but for now I just simply want to send more water from the home world to this asteroid all right so that uh, water sieve is just about ready just gonna do some random digging remove some of this excess pipes that I no longer need and realize that I don't have a vent over here for the natural gas. Natural gas is not going to the, towards the home world. That's because I don't have a vent for all the other gases. For instance, chlorine that you see there, it has nowhere to go. So now that I've got a vent over there, I should be getting natural gas going towards the interplanetary launcher. The other thing is I've noticed I don't have a power on this system here. This is going to be l the system that sends lead towards the home world. So this world here really just exists for resources to be sent to the home world. Uh, it's not really a long-term living location. And eventually when I don't need any more plastic, I might not even have a dupe here once I've removed, of course, all of the, the lead and iron and anything like that uh, that I want for it. But uh, for the time being, I still have a lot of material to send back. And I don't want to do that all with rockets, so uh, that's why I'm setting this up, the system up. Okay, so I see some water going into this rocket that's going to be going to the Desolens. I also have this new interplanetary launcher on the homeworld. I already have that uh, that system in the Desolens because it's already been sending oil there, but I haven't had it here sending water to the Desolens. And just also got a material research uh, station there. That is, uh, that's going to be receiving rebels as well. A new location for filtering water or water desalinators. So that is going to convert this salt water to regular water, just adding to my supply of water temporarily. Because that, uh, well, there is a geyser there, but I'm not going to reply on that. So now you see lead heading towards the interplanetary launcher. And that is going to give me more access to uh, lead in the home world. All right, the other thing that I'm going to do is carefully construct a system that's going to control the n amount of, of uh, enriched uranium that's going to be sent to, uh, to the research reactor. Because I, I, my goal is to supply it every cycle with just a, around just amount of enriched uranium for a given cycle such that at any given point if it's starting to get too hot i can stop this process it will run out of fuel naturally rather than have a meltdown much rather than have that so i'm gonna have two bins here two one bin that's between the sweepers that is just going to have a kilogram maximum of material and the bin on the left can the dupes can put in as much enriched uranium as they want uh, of course this is going to need power and there are going, there's going to be two cyber clocks. And each of those uh, sweepers is only going to operate for a couple percentages of the day, two or three, and, and, and at various different uh, points, such that the first sweeper can put one kilogram inside that bin. And, once, and only once a day, the other sweeper will take that very small amount of enriched uranium and send it in towards the research reactor. Now, if I don't find that's enough, I can increase it to two or three, but I'm just going to start with one and see how that goes. So here's the cyber clocks. They're going in and they're going to tell you know, those uh, sweepers exact logic that I went over, basically 
uh, one you know they can only operate for a very small point of the day and at different points just that they're not continuing I don't have the one on left for instance throwing more uh, enriched re uranium inside that middle bin and then the other sweeper takes it off and they sort of like work together to load quite a bit in at the same time they need to operate at different times it's not so much important that they only have a couple percentage of the day but it's far more important that they operate at different points of uh, the cycle and and the whole point as i mentioned is it just allows me to control the amount of enriched uranium that goes in so that i can turn it off if i need to go through a cooling period i am going to build a much larger system called a nuclear power plant and made a separate video on that design so that much larger system and i say larger it's really i'm talking about the number of steam turbines which is going to be around 12 to 15 versus the one that i currently have which only has three three is not enough to keep a research reactor running 100 percent of the time um, it'll just simply overheat unless you have a system that uh, perhaps drains water out into space every so often when it gets too hot supplying new water which is a complete waste i i want to cycle the water around such that at some point i no longer have to provide new water into it so that's what i'm doing there uh, so just notice that i've got the first setting on the cyber clock so that's telling that sweeper when to run and the other cyber clock once it's created I will put in a very similar setting. The only difference is that is going to uh, be active at a different part of the day. So if I go in, uh, just wait for that automation. So I'm just going to uh, copy, copy the settings because it'll be the same, but number of up uh, 2%, but I'm going to run at the opposite point of the day. It doesn't really have to be exact opposite. It could be one after the other as long as there is a little bit of gap between just so that the two don't run at the same time all right the other thing is that middle bin make sure that uh, the dupes don't have access to it so i actually might need to make changes but this is where i was storing enriched uranium i've got five tons of it so far which is nice so i will uh, actually choose this location now to be where i put all my enriched uranium going forward I also have logic here that tells this Red Bolt reflector when to operate the idea is it's going to sort of siphon the Red Bolts towards the re towards this research station when it's needed but when it's not needed it can bypass it and go to the interplanetary launcher eventually it'll also go towards the, the rockets that have Red Bull engines but I don't have the research for that yet so that is a later on type of thing so that uh, all this metal unfortunately I should have been sending more of my lead to the home world earlier because everything I construct is made out of copper but I've got tons and tons of copper so I'm not uh, not too worried I'm just putting not gate here realize I don't have the right logic I want to put this system through not gate indicating that basically turns turn it on when I'm actually in need of uh, of rebels inside this machine it sends a true signal when the machine is full which is kind of the opposite of why I want since hence why I've got a not gate to be uh, installed at that location by one of my dupes you can see my desalinator is operating and it's now taking uh, more water into my overall system and I'm using quite a bit of water at the moment for the research reactor for the oil well in the Desalins and their planetary launcher and that so that is actually helping quite a bit now that I've got a second source of water in uh, this world here I just built this wall just to prevent my dupes from accessing that bin and I've got three tiles as long as I destroy this ladder here so that bin is uh, no longer going to be accessible by dupes which is by design so only the sweeper can access it and the sweeper will only once a day load enriched uranium in and the idea here is i'm going to put enriched uranium into the loader and that will only have the amount that's in that bin put into it once a cycle so this essentially just uh, is what i talked about it's controlling the amount that goes into it and this is only because i have a mini research reactor 
or the overall, it's, you know, still a research reactor, but the over, overall system around the research reactor is miniaturized in terms of what I plan to do anyways in the future with the full nuclear power plant. But uh, for the time being, that is why I'm controlling that. Once I have a, a nuclear power plant, I can throw in all the enriched uranium into it and not worry. All right, they just realized that drywall is hasn't been built because the dupes can, did not have access to it. So I'm just gonna allow them to have access to it, construct the drywall. And I'm gonna turn off this system here because I've got enough water sitting on top of uh, the steam turbines. All right, so drywall has been installed. Let's get rid of these two uh, things here, making the way for the third steam turbine. That, uh, that's going to keep the research reactor cool. And I've got two of my three water uh, reservoirs full, or liquid reservoirs full. So we're in a good situation. I believe now I can actually close off this room and have that uh, start to operate very soon. So it's just, it's just a matter of giving it some water making sure the enriched uranium is uh, is dropped off and that should turn on producing quite a bit of radiation and i can put on one of those rebel generators to make use of that the dupe here is bored i don't like it when dupes don't have anything to do so how about we endeavor to find out something um they are they're possibly going to be running out of water there's small little cash here well, let's just throw in a pump i'll make that out of iron actually you know what hold on why don't i just dig down to the pump that already exists down there that way they don't they don't even have to install anything they just have to let the water drop and that will go into the oxygen based system as well as the oil well if there's any excess amount of oxygen all right i'm hoping that will be enough until the this interplanetary launcher can go live but i also have this rocket that is being loaded with water as well. Let's have a look inside. Uh, almost one liquid reservoir filled with that. And when that is full, that will also go to the Desilens and give them a supply of water. All right, let's see over here. Slowly getting this filled up. Notice that I don't have the water line going into the research reactor connected yet, because if it did, it would start to operate and I want to uh, wait until I've got enough water. That may be enough. Perhaps we'll just wait for a little bit longer for a, little, a tiny bit more water to go in there. Let's just get rid of that old temporary automation. Uh, oh yeah, steam turbine. Let's put that in. I want, definitely want to have that in existence before the research reactor turns on. When the research reactor turns on, you'll actually get a bit of water instead of steam, but over the long term, I'll uh, be able to, uh, or that water will fully turn to steam. Notice that I've got that shaft door. I don't believe I mentioned that. That's for the nuclear waste. I even have that automated. I was thinking about doing that manually with a manual sort of a switch. But the idea there, if that detects an excessive amount of, of uh, nuclear waste, it will dump it out to that square below. So that's what that's about. In the home world here, I'm just going to build a little channel there just to slightly reduce the amount of water va uh, oxygen waste. Though I'm gonna put a water channel for them to dip down at some point. Okay, possibly because I've had so many things to do here in the home world, I've never actually completed the line that sends natural gas towards the gas range. And the first bit of natural gas has arrived from the interplanetary launcher from the decimal end, so that's exciting. So I'm gonna complete the line that goes from here to the uh, natural gas line at the bottom that feeds into the uh, gas range. I don't want that connected. And just need a tiny bit of pipe down here to uh, complete that. And that will give me two sources of natural gas, one that comes from the decimal ends and the other that comes from the oil refinery. So this whole oil production actually produces quite a bit of natural gas, which is excellent because I don't have access to natural gas geyser yet. I do have an asteroid in mind uh, that, that I know has access to it. 
but I'll do that in a future episode. So this is a big moment. Water is going to the nuclear or to the research reactor that is being operated for the very first time, producing quite a bit of radiation. And that is excellent. Okay, surprised by how quick things have heated up. Uh, tense amount of radiation right away. I knew that was going to be instant. I even have a Red Bull generator uh, turned on, and that's going to be directing the Red Bulls towards research station. Actually, let's watch the first one make its way towards uh, towards that. And there we go. So I actually can destroy this one here and destroy this uh, all the old uh, old equipment here. And what that what I'll be able to do from this point is be able to have a lot more research happen uh, far more quickly quickly uh, than before because of the intense intense uh, radiation rebel generator that I have access to. Let's cap this episode off with the interplanetary launcher that is also being uh, fed by this new mini research reactor station. Uh, just, just double checking that that lines up with the output with it. It does, okay, so well, otherwise I would have had to put a, oh, there it is, a red bolt is being fired towards it and actually uh, feeds in, but that has nowhere to go, and no equipment or, or no water line into it yet. So I'm gonna tell it to go to the desolence and send water or build uh, that water line going into it so it always sends water to the desolence and that water will be used for oxygen for the dupe that's there okay and i just realized a little thing now when oil is falling down it's going to actually fall on top of the interplanetary launcher not a big deal it's just i didn't really think about this uh too carefully let's just move it over a little bit so that the oil that falls in this land, it's just, it'll make it very much uh, a lot easier to actually, first a little bit of, uh, actually, no, there's no water in there, so we can't fire anything. But, um, yeah, what I was saying is I want to destroy the tiles above the beacon, around the beacon, so that it, it just makes it a little bit easier for the dupes to be able to put oil into that uh, can opening or payload opening uh, system. So, small little change. Okay, <laughs> Chef gets struck by a Red Bolt. Not cool. Uh, a little bit of damage there, but you know what? Just to be safe, how about we temporarily turn that off while we wait for this uh, interplanetary launcher to be constructed? So same logic, water is going to go into it. When it's constructed, I will tell it to go to the Desolens, and then I think I'm going to be happy with that location. And with that... That's going to be this episode. So as I mentioned, if you found an improvement in the quality, the frame rate, or the jitterness, or whatever, uh, possibly if you've experienced that in the previous episodes, uh, let me know what uh, the change is. If there's still an issue, I'll endeavor to possibly uh, experiment with other things that I could do on my end. Anyways, there is the interplanetary launcher. Again, the idea is to send water to the Desolens actually going to make it a little bit easier for my dupes to pass underneath it now that that exists okay perfect i'm going to change the location it has the the right icon for where it's going but it doesn't actually know you can see some oil has landed there from the desolence and now i have uh, a lot of rad bolts to go towards research and to go towards sending water to the desolence the main research i'm going to do is the red bull propulsion which is something I'll take advantage of in future episodes. I don't know if it's going to be the next episode. I actually don't know what the uh, project for the next episode is, but I'm in a really good state. 370,000 calories of uh, food. didn't even notice that. That is uh, amazing. Probably mostly pepper bread. Um, oxygen system is much stronger now that we have electrolyzers instead of blue water to oxygen. And let's just finish this off by connecting the beacon to make sure that water lands there rather than uh, in random places making the dupe that there that's there uh, void have to run around the top of the base all right in this episode i've set up a mini nuclear power plant 
or a you know, research reactor with a few cooling vents, but the idea is it can't run 100% of the time, so I know I'm going to have to turn it off at some point, but it's going to allow me to produce a lot more Red Bulls than a few Wheezy Wars that we said before. This next episode, do I construct the full nuclear power plants? Do I go after wild sleep wheat or something completely else? I do not know. If you want to know, join me in that episode, like, subscribe, and see you then.